Okay, so in this video, we're gonna look at the different types of answers that you can utilize within the Moodle formula question type. So when interacting with the platform, students really have four different ways by which they can respond to questions with various answers. The first type is that their answer can be a number, and it is what it says it is. The student type in an answer like 5.26, and it tells them whether they're right or wrong. The second type is numeric where the student can use some basic math operations like add, subtract, multiply, and divide as part of their answer. So for example, students can type in two divided by three as their answer. Notice there's a difference between number and numeric because number only allows the student to type a number in like 0 0.25, whereas numeric will allow the student to type in some form of math operation like one divided by four. Now there's numerical formula as well. Numerical formula will allow the student access to more complicated math operations. More complicated like square root, more complicated like logarithm, like sine, more complicated math operations. So numerical formula, if you would, is a little bit more advanced than numeric because numeric allows really basic math operations, whereas numerical formula will allow access to more complicated mathematical operations. And the last type is algebraic formula, whereas algebraic formula will allow the student to type in an answer that involves some form of variable like X or Y or something like that. Okay, so now let's have a look at some of these answer types in greater detail. So here we are within our question bank. We're gonna click create new question and we're gonna add a formulas question. I'm gonna name my question. And in this case, I'm gonna call this delete dash parts information. And I'm going to skip out on the variables because they're really not needed. And I want to focus in on really just parts information or answer types here. So under the question text, I'm going to type in, type the number 5.26 below. There we go. And I'm going to go down to part one. I'm going to say my answer for part one is going to be 5.26. And there we go. I want it to grade this with absolute error so that the student must type in exactly 5.26. And I'm pretty happy with that for the moment. So I'm just gonna save those changes and then preview the question. Type the number 5.26, the student types 5.26 and they check that. Perfect, there we go. So let's suppose we change our answer to part one. Instead of students responding with 5.26, we need them to respond with the one third answer. Now it doesn't matter whether or not your answer is programmed in here or whether maybe you have a local or global variable that's, that's being put into the answer field. It really doesn't matter. Right now, one third is the answer and you're asking students to respond with a number. I go up to the top, I change my question text to read one third and we save those changes and we preview. Now, when students see the question, they're asked to type one third. They're of course gonna type in one third. They hit check and they're graded wrong. So frustrating. Well, what's happening is you've told the system that the student is to use a number for their answer. Well, that answer type does not allow the student to use the divide sign, right? That's a basic math operation, divide. The number answer type doesn't give students access to basic math operations. Now, what's really frustrating though, is even if the student goes like this and copies the right answer, takes another attempt at it, pastes that into the answer box, checks it, it's still gonna grade them wrong. Why? Because this is an approximation, an approximation of that. Now, if they add enough threes, and I mean they add lots of threes, then Moodle's gonna to start to actually grade it right, okay? But the reality is you're getting some grading problems and inconsistencies because you're using the wrong answer type. You need students to be able to access basic math operations, so therefore you need to change the question to allow an answer type to allow basic math operations. Let's show you that now. So I close this down, open part one, and I change from number to numeric. And that's gonna give students now access to basic math operations to include as part of their answer. So we save those changes, we preview, and the student types in one third and they get it right. There we go. Now, what about the student that responded with a decimal? So if we go start again and the student use what's on their clipboard from last time, they check it, they're gonna get it wrong. 
Why? Because their answer is not the same as one-third. It's a decimal approximation to one-third. Again, if they use enough threes, they're going to be okay, but it's grading things exactly the way you want right now. It's basically saying, student, type in one-third, don't accept anything else, and that's that. Now, what's also kind of nice about this numeric is it allows you access to other things, um, you know, operations, add, subtract, multiply, divide. The student, of course, could also try something like pi by six. So the student could now type in pi by six as their answer. So what I'm going to do is go up to the top here and instead of asking them to type in one third, we're gonna ask students to type in pi by six. Now, what I want you to take note of here is the way by which I'm typing pi. I have to type pi with pi and then a set of open and closed parentheses, okay? That's how I have to type it in. If I go in and save this and then preview it, you ask students to type in pi by six, Notice the students type in pi by six like that, and they're graded correct. So the student has to type in pi different than the way the author types in pi, okay? Now, if the student tries to type in pi the way the author types in pi, then they're actually gonna be graded wrong, okay? So that's an important thing to take note of with the formless question type, is the way that the author types in pi versus the way a student types in pi are slightly different. Okay, so now let's change from numeric to numerical formula. And what numerical formula is going to do is give you access to more complex math operations. Like students not only can add, subtract, multiply, and divide in answer boxes, but they'll be able to use, say, a square root, or a logarithm, or a sinusoidal function, or something like that, or arc sine. They'll be able to access more complicated math functions as part of their answer. So for example, the student can type in sine of pi by six. They can use the sine function now as part of their answer. I'm gonna change the question text to match up with this. So I'm gonna change this to type sine of pi by six below. There we go. So I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna preview it. Ask the student to type in sine of pi by six. So the student types in sine of pi by six and they're graded correct. Now, one thing that I really dislike about the Moodle formless question type is really what I dislike about Moodle altogether is that it's generally sometimes really, really, really terrible at mathematics. What do I mean? Well, it's asking students to type in sine of pi by six, which is equal to 0 0.5, right? Mathematically, those are equal. Well, what if the student recognizes that? What if the student recognizes that the sine of pi by six is the same as 0 0.5? Mm, well, they're gonna be graded wrong for knowing too much information. <laughs> Frustrating, right? Now, you might be thinking, oh, it's because they typed in a number. Well, no, even if they type in like one divided by two, it's still gonna grade them wrong, even though a half is the same as mm, a half. Um, even if they go like this and they go cosine of say pi by three, which is the same as the sine of pi by six, Eh, it's still going to grade them wrong, okay? So Moodle's not great at math, and it is something that you should be aware of as you're building and troubleshooting some of your questions. In this question, basically, the thing to think about is you've told students they are to type in the answer of sine of pi by six. That's what they're supposed to type in. That's what they type in, and they get it correct. Okay, so now let's move on to another answer type. So for this answer type, what we're gonna do is switch from numerical formula to algebraic formula. Now with algebraic formula, what's the first and foremost really important thing to have happen is that your answer must be a string. So I'm gonna open quotes and for our string here, maybe we're gonna say two X squared plus three. So the algebraic formula is answer type is going to allow students to use a variable as part of their answer. Okay, so in this case, students are gonna be able to use X as part of their answer. Okay, so let's go up to the top now and we'll change the question. Uh, maybe we'll throw some nice LaTeX in here. So we'll go like that and go two X squared plus three. Excellent. Make it look fancy. And there we go. Now, if I go ahead and try to save this, there we go. You get an error that says try evaluation error. What that basically means is 
Moodle's having trouble evaluating what this answer actually is. Why? Because of this X. So what Moodle needs to do is Moodle needs to substitute numbers into the student's value for X and substitute the same numbers into the answer for X and then see if those are equal. And it's going to do that a whole bunch of times to basically improve accuracy. And you haven't really told Moodle what X is right now. So what you're going to do is open up this category that says show more and declare X as a local variable. Well, what's the difference between local and global? Well, local is exactly what it sounds like. The declaration is going to stay local to just this part of the question, whereas global would affect the entire question. So for my local variable, I'm going to say x is given by the range of x's from maybe 2 to 2,000 in steps of 1. Maybe something like that. There's my local variable. If you need more than one variable in your student's answer, well, you can add more in as necessary. Okay, so, oops. There's a syntax problem. There we go. And that's that. So let's check it. All looks good. Preview. Type 2x squared plus 3 below. So we'd have 2x squared plus 3. Notice the student does have to know how to use the hat symbol for an exponent. But when they go to get it graded, it's all good. It works really nicely. Okay, so one bit of troubleshooting that I want to point out here on the algebraic formula answer type is something, again, that I ran into that was a little bit frustrating. I want you to take note as to what it says the correct answer here is, particularly that x is in the correct answer, as it should be. Okay? Now, I'm going to make a small change to the question. I'm going to close this down, open up part one. I'm going to change the local variable definition to just one item. Right now, it's a range. It's from 2 to 2,000. So Moodle's going to analyze this across many, many, many different x values to see if the student's right. As a beginner, quite often, what you might be tempted to do is say, let's let x be 5, just this one thing. Okay? Let's see what that will do. If I go ahead and say, let's let x be 5, and then I go ahead and save this, and I preview, Students has to type in 2x squared plus 3. They're going to be graded correct, but notice what happened to the, the show and answer to the student. It gets pretty complicated for the student. The student thinks, wait a minute, did I have to put a 5 there? Or did I not have to put a 5 there? What exactly is going on, right? Well, that's what happens when you try to narrow the scope of your local variable too much. If you just have one thing in there, Moodle is only going to substitute one value in, and it's going to actually display that as the correct answer. So it's something to be aware of when you're building this, that your local variables should have many, 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 many possible things in it. Okay, now let's also look at, say, another potential glitch in the system. And it's not really a glitch, it's just the way Moodle and programming works. So if I want students to, say, type in something like log x, a lot of people, including mathematicians, will see log as being log base 10. But computer programmers and computers see log as being the natural logarithm or the log with base e. So log base 10s, I'm going to point out, are just messy. They're really quite nasty when working inside of Moodle. So I need the student to type in log base 10 of x below. I'm going to show you what happens here. So if I go into algebraic formula, if I want the student to type in log base 10 of x, the student's going to have to type in log 10 of x. That's how you would tell Moodle that it's a base 10 logarithm. If you leave it like that, that says to the computer the answer is the natural logarithm, or ln of x. So we have to conclude this 10 here, just like that. Okay. Now, when I go ahead and save this, save changes and continue editing, and we preview. It says to the student, type in log of x. Now, when a student reads this, they are probably taking a math or a chemistry class, and they're seeing that as a base 10 log, because it doesn't say ln. If the student just types in log x, then, of course, they're going to be graded incorrect, because the computer is going to interpret their answer as the natural log. That's the way it works. What's also confusing is the way that Moodle processes a base 10 logarithm. A 
and Moodle is processing a base 10 logarithm, it's looking really strange here, isn't it? Very strange, right? But rest assured, if the student tells Moodle that they intended to type a log base 10 logarithm, like that, it's going to work just fine. So as I said, base 10 logarithms are messy. And depending on your Moodle installation, they can be more or less messy. It depends on really the PHP version that your Moodle server is running. Okay, so that's that. Now, one thing that we talked about a little bit earlier with regards to how answers are getting displayed. Let's go back to this where we asked students to type in the number one third below. When we had that set up as numeric, like this, we saved that and we previewed it. It was working really nicely. Except one thing that kind of annoys me is I want this to show one third because students that wrote all those threes are still getting it marked wrong because they are wrong. You ask them to type in the exact value of one third. I would like that to display here. So in order to do that, what you're going to want to do is actually change the answer type from this to this. And we'll save that and preview it. And now the student can type in one third and it's going to grade it correct and show the exact answer. So really, what does this end up meaning? Well, if you find that you're using a lot of exact values in your development, which a lot of math courses involve exact values in development, then you're gonna find that you're leaning on the algebraic formula question or response area much more than any other. Okay. And so this concludes our video on answer types within the Moodle formula question type.